Millions ride on the Moscow Metro every day. But only a small percentage of commuters are aware of its secrets. We arranged a meeting with the geologist Evgeny Zverev in the Moscow suburbs. He operates a sophisticated device called a georadar, which scans soil for empty spaces. These often help in the search for oil. In an area with no reported sewerage system or any other registered underground communications, Evgeny's radar has detected something. We discovered some object which could be either a tunnel or a pipe with a rather extensive diameter. It is lying at more than three meters deep. It could be a sewer drainage, but it doesn't look like a cable tunnel. They are usually deeper, so it's hard to say what it is. In order to carry on our investigation, we brought the living legend of Moscow's underground to the same place after dark. Vadim Mikhailov has been a digger exploring the world below since the age of 15. He definitely knows his turf, so he did not hesitate in telling us what the tunnel was. As far as we know, the Ministry of Defense's secret underground drainage tunnel lies here. It goes this way and that way. The system's got several layers, and underneath it is the secret underground city. Follow me. As we climbed down, the digger told us scary stories about the murky world beneath the soil. It's just the entrance. The main military tunnel is over there. And sometimes we see strange things coming from there. We go down and see slime on these walls. We have no idea what could be leaving this slime. Once during another routine walk down the drainage tunnels, Vadim stumbled upon what happened to be one of Moscow's biggest secrets. If we go that way, we would see a lot of alkali on the walls. Once we tried to remove the alkali and found heavily armored walls. You could imagine that hardly anyone would put heavy armor in public sewers. Later on, we saw a huge hall with columns, and we got there through a simple ventilation shaft. Back then, we had no idea that it was the so-called D6 object. It is still so classified that it's very hard to say whether it actually exists. The D6 facility is believed to be an alternative metro line initiated by Joseph Stalin. The regular metro was used as a shelter for thousands during the bombings of Moscow in the Second World War. Later, during the Cold War, the leader ordered the construction of an extensive system of underground bunkers in case of a nuclear attack, and the D6 metro report connected them but nobody knows exactly how many bunkers there are in Moscow as they are very well hidden this only looks like just a house on a quiet Moscow street but in reality no one has ever lived here it is made of solid rock and for decades it acted as a decoy for what used to be a top-secret underground bunker The Tagansky facility has become the first site of its kind to be declassified and turned into a museum. But some say there are at least 200 more beneath Moscow, and they are still much protected. Rumor has it that the security guards have a warrant to shoot on sight. RT's viewers may know this reporter from the news channel's broadcasts, but most of the country knows Dmitry Gluchovsky for his book, Metro 2033. It paints the picture of a post-nuclear Moscow, where people have to live underground, as the outside world is lifeless and radioactive. Dmitry developed the idea of underground bunkers to enlighten the masses about what lies beneath. So what was it that made you choose the underground, the Moscow subway, as the main uh, plot for your story, out of all possible scenarios in the world? Well, to start with, I've been using Moscow Metro since I was a 10-year-old boy, and uh, till I finished my school, till I graduated, it was like 10 years every day. And one day I've just discovered accidentally that Moscow Metro is not exactly just a transport infrastructure. It is the world's bigger, biggest underground shelter. And uh, then I started exploring it, exploring it, and then one day an idea came to my mind to combine the probability of a nuclear war, that we read about it every day in newspapers, with the fact that Moscovites have the world's biggest anti-nuclear bunker just under their feet. The book quickly became a bestseller, fulfilling Dmitry's mission. But nevertheless, the undiscovered world of the underground is still a mystery to commuters. And sometimes surprising things can be found in its depths. 
Some say that this blue clay found in the Moscow underground could be used in cosmetics. And there are hundreds of tons of those here. It's unbelievable. It could be that the anti-aging and eternal beauty recipe is hidden at at least 100 meters below daylight. Many paranormal tales also surround the Moscow metro. When I pass this tunnel between Sokol and Voikovska stations, sometimes the needles on my barometer go crazy. And so far, this phenomenon hasn't been explained. People sometimes talk of hearing strange voices and seeing strange things. There are even rumors of two-meter mutant rats lurking in the dark tunnels. In a number of cases, tunnels were dug in close vicinity to cemeteries. Some speak of strange things happening in these areas. Places of mass burials or killings or any other psychological omissions are characterized by anomalies like ghosts and different voices, not to mention the negative impact on people's psychic condition. This could lead to slight hallucinations. Parapsychologist Vladislav Klimov promised to show us what impact the metro could have on humans. He used a traditional device to do this. It evaluates the difference between positive and negative energy. It's an old method called biolocation, and the device is called a biolocational frame. They have been used for centuries. Frankly speaking, they determine good and bad places. If I pointed towards the forest, the frames are wide open, meaning that this way is a source of positive energy. But if I point it at the metro, we can see the frames cross. It means that there's a strongly negative pathogenic zone over there, which could affect humans. This strong pathogenic negative force field could also be the reason why some feel depressed on the metro. However, according to the parapsychologist, the metro has certain spots, though quite rare, which do the opposite. That is accumulating positive energy. Passengers of the Moscow underground believe touching the nose of this dog statue at Площадь Революция or Revolution Square station brings good luck. Well, apparently over the years, many have indeed touched this nose. As you can see, the color has almost come off it. It could be that the statue's nose acts as a distraction to make people feel at ease, just like the many passengers who try to read books and magazines or listen to music, taking their minds off the closed space and negative aura. Any kind of distraction plays a curative role. People have certain subconscious worries. They're stressed and uncomfortable. Then they get a call on the phone or hear something unusual or see a colorful advertising poster. Anything which can set their mind to a new tone is useful. In the continuous flow of people on the metro, there was one woman who tried to be this cheery factor. Lyudmila Shumakova, an escalator announcer, did her job in an unusual manner, sometimes reading poems and singing songs to the crowds. It's easy to go to the middle. Come on. But then after a passenger complained, the management told her to stop this interaction with the crowd. The truth is the passengers will leave with a smile, and my boss decided people were laughing at me and not with me, but we were laughing together. At one stage, all the announcements on the metro had friendly voices, familiar to the crowds. Lev Durov is a well-known Russian actor who was among several people to take part in this project. When people hear familiar voices, they feel like they're at home. The official announcements sound a bit harsh. They make one feel like a soldier. And commuters should feel like passengers, not servicemen. But despite the rumors and the belief that the underground can be a depressing place for some, it still remains the most popular means of public transport in Moscow. Statistics show that on average, a Moscovite spends a quarter of their lifetime down in the subway. The metro has a rich past and ambitious future. There are plans to add a further 80 kilometers of subway within the next seven years. 
and even to launch an automated train system in the near future. All of this is something that time itself dictates. Just like the style of the new stations which have been opened in the last decade. Bright, spacious and high-tech. With this evolution of style, some are concerned that the Moscow Metro might lose its character. But the management disagrees. Whether this is the case, only the next five to ten years will show. But it seems that some things remain unchanged after all. The Moscow Metro. In three quarters of a century of its existence, it has changed its pace, its crowd capacities and its outlook. But even if someday the subway will eventually alter the atmosphere of underground Soviet-style palaces, one thing will probably remain the same. In Moscow, a rapidly growing megapolis, the number of passengers preferring the metro to on-ground traffic is unlikely to ever diminish.